Hi guys, welcome back. It does not matter whether you're working out of a coloring book or you're doing an original sketch. Lips are lips, and they should be done in the same way to get a more realistic look. Even in cartoony looking uh, pictures, there are things that you can do to make them look fantastic. And today I'm going to show you how to make any lips look good. Now, this book, I'm just giving you an example of some gorgeous lips. I don't know anything about this book. It was purchased on Etsy a long time ago by a friend of mine who sent it to me as a gift. And these girls are beautiful, and they're perfect line drawings. And you can see how well the sketches are done. Perfect for... Um, perfect for doing lips in a realistic way, even though this is a coloring book. Oh, this is one that I was working on and quit. I do that a lot. Um, let's see. So I wish I knew a little bit more about this book, but it's some fantastic line drawing. This would come out so cute. Uh, I, I really need to do this book. I need to work out of this book. So let's start. So here are some like doodle sketches I was working on today as teaching aids. They're not developed pictures. By the way, this is the Strathmore blue gray paper. It's awful. It, it, that's just my opinion. If you like working with it, then it's fine. Go for it. But I will never do any artwork on this paper. I just want to show you that when I sprayed it, it stained it. And not only did it stain it, this is the first time this has actually happened. I've never had this happen before. Not only did it stain it on this side, but it's completely stained on the other. I didn't like the way it felt coloring on it. It doesn't feel the same as the other papers. So before we go on, I have a tip that's really cool for you guys and can make all the difference in the world. If you like to use gel pens, and I always have liked to use gel pens because you get such beautiful lines that are so nicely opaque and they're easy and they're great for highlights. The only problem is, is when you go on to wax, they clog up the pen. And if you clog that tip up enough, your pen is wasted. They sell these in 10 packs, you know, <laughs> there's a reason. It's not that you need 10 pens, is that you, 10 pens will equal one pen by the time the, the ink glops up on you. But if you take, and I can't believe it took me 10 years to realize this trick, and I did realize it today, and if you guys want to say, oh, we knew that already, well, why didn't you tell me? If you spray it, okay, this, this has white over it, so it's very glary right now. If you spray your art, and you can use a fixative, workable fixative, or you can, um, in this case, this is a vinyl fixative on there. This is Krylon, and it still worked. Then you take your pen, you let it dry completely. Then you take your pen, and you go over it. No glop in the tip. That's why it has all these squiggles in it. I was playing with it. That's actually colored with black prism color and white Holbein. And trust me on it, you cannot color gel pen with Holbein. You might as well kiss your set goodbye. And I tried it. I sprayed it. Did work. And you can go over it with no gloppy mess. You're going to see different anatomical structures. And on this sheet, I did not mean this to be a art piece. I'm hyper exaggerating where these structures are now we'll start with the here a proper lip has five pillows one two three four and five these are areas of the lips that stick out now if you ever take your lipstick and kiss glass that's the shape you're going to get you're going to get your five pillows so you've got to remember when you're shading lips that your darker colors go in here and your lighter colors go over here. And this will give you that slightly pillowed look on your picture that you want. 
Now let's talk about some other structures. This area right in here is called the Cupid's bow. There is a highlight on the Cupid's bow that you should take into consideration when doing lips. And you would have the highlight going right there, depending on the lighting, how big that um, highlight is. This area right over here, which I moved over here. Now, of course, don't do it this way. It's, it has uh, much better ways of doing it, but I just hyper exaggerated it. This is called the philtrum. And this is the philtrum ridge, okay, right in here. So your pictures, right from the Cupid's bow, right here and from here, you're going to have two ridges. Those get highlighted. Start very, very lightly. In the middle, it's dark. Er, it should be a little bit shadowed. And then it comes down on the ends to form the base of the mouth. And if you do this properly, your mouth will take on a puckered look or like it's coming out of the face. And of course, we're going to demo it, but this is the exaggerated. So you're going to go dark, the um, film ridge, start it very lightly and build up the color. Don't go in with a pencil and start making it really dark because you can make it too much. It's subtle. It's just rolling along on the person. Another area that you need to take into consideration is the oral com commissures. I didn't even know it had a name before this, but I knew about them. Right here at the corner of the mouth and right here at the corner of the mouth, there should be very dark areas. I almost use black. It will separate your upper lip from your bottom lip and give you a more realistic and in-depth um, look on the pay, um, illusion on the paper. I'm going to show you how to do it. This is too much. Don't go by it just so that you could see it. Now, although you have your pillows and you're going to be shading your pillows, okay, right there, you're going, this area on the lips is going to be slightly darker and this area slightly darker and that will give it a rounder appearance. Okay. Now, because these are basically think of them as sausages or hot dogs and they're flexible and think of them as two rolls. Now, when we talked about highlighting, when you're doing a cylinder, your basic highlight, your basic shapes. And if you don't know, I've got a video on basic shapes, what your, what a shape will always have in it top ridge of this is always highlighted. Okay. So you would have your highlight going in the middle. What is that called? Your center light. It's the highest, it's the highest peak of what an object to the light source is. And it gives you a nice highlight. Now this does not have to be the highlight of the lips. It's just the center light. So, you're going to go in, the shading on it should be lighter going around. And I know this sounds also complicated, but it's not when we put it all together. So these are highlighted areas or center light areas. It is not your main highlight. Your main highlights to show whether a lip is moist or wet or how it, I know a lot of people don't like the word moist. I grew up with the word moist. It doesn't bother me. I think that's a millennial thing. Got to complain about something. So here we have lips that are very wet. That's your highlight. That's when you go in afterwards, 
you could spray it and then come back and you then you add in your little doodads of light and this would be where the lips are picking up the shine from the outside of the room these are true highlights they're done in white you can make them very bright or you can have some that are not as bright and you can adjust that so you could have them on here this is a lot because i just kept on going because i wanted to see if i can get the pen to go really really bright but you'd also have them on the top this is not sprayed i don't want to ruin my gel pen so that's that now the direction of your strokes is extremely important when it comes to lips if anything on your face that you color that is uh you can go in any direction the lips are not this one when you do lips you follow the contour of the lip because you're going to be making puckers in that lip so you don't want to go I, I did this one. I don't know. Okay. You don't want to go and color lips like this. Side to side. Okay. What you're going to do for lips is you're going to follow the curve of the lip, which is slightly curved from the top going around using a tapered stroke. It will form, if you're doing it right, it will form that area. And here's another one, but I didn't like the paper, so I wasn't going to show you, but I'll show it to you anyway. Um, the brown turned actually into a mustache. I, that's why I didn't like it. I like the lips, but I didn't like the fact that the paper around it was just awful. Don't look at this. Um, so see how... I went in creating the ridges. Now, this these lips are not finished. I would still work on them a lot if I didn't quit on them. But it forms the highlight or the center light right in the middle is where you want that. Formed it right here. And now you have to look at the shadows on the lips, where the shadows are always. The upper lip juts out above the lower lip. So this is always going to shadow, unless you have some sort of wonkiness in the mouth. Um, this is always going to form a shadow right in here. This curves, so there's always going to be a darker area right in here okay this is that area we talked about and i don't seem to have a black pencil around here in this area right in here it's going to be very dark and that is what's going to separate those lips from an upper and a lower one it makes a big difference and change that if you do your lips structurally correct you can fix a lot of the damage some ugly lips in books have. Even really tiny. You try to put your structures in as good as you can. Now, we all love Chris Chang's art. I mean, I don't, I've never heard of anybody who doesn't like her art. Look at her lips. Every lip that she does, she does not just color in. It could be the teeniest, tiniest lips. But she's going to make the illusion that those lips are real every single time. So I did this sketch. It was just a quick one. Not much to it. I don't even know if you could see it because it's erased. You could see it a little bit. And it was just a quick face. And this could be any Etsy picture on the planet. You will get your outline so let's go and do these lips right. And I'm going to put you on hyperlapse and I'm going to let you watch.
getting a little bit overdone because it's such a small little area i just keep going i'm watching youtube and coloring on her for me to properly shape her nose i need eye sockets so it's a little bit wide over here this would start cutting in and i if i had eyes in there that's what i would do it's fine um you would cut in oh right into there this would become darker because i'm going into the head then you'd have the eye sockets are going around the eye sockets. It would be out. I can keep going on this all day, but you got the idea with the lips. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it and then I'm going to put a really high shine on it. What the heck? The picture is going to be a little glary when I lay it down because there is a layer of uh, sealant on it. So that's why I'm tilting her up. And now it's time to add the shine onto her lips. Okay, I really like this method. It scrapes down really easily and nicely. And now all I have to do is go in and do another spray and it'll melt right into the lips. And I want to do something a little bit different now at, that I had planned. I'm going to add some drips coming off the lips just because I see it on uh, Instagram. I might screw it completely up, but who knows? I like that. <laughs> I really do. It looks very Instagram. So I'm going to go and give it a spray and call it a day. <laughs>